Hello guys. Um, I haven't done a video story time in forever. So, or I'm actually trying to do a, a story time. So this might be a little bit awkward. Um, but I wanted to get on here and tell you the story of how I found out um, about my dyslexia and ADHD um, when I was in grade school our school um, didn't have enough funding to run the, the whole year my third year my third my my third grade year and so we all had to go to different schools um, and because <coughs> um, we all had to go back had to go to different schools the Board of Education had all of us go get tested for any learning disabilities because the other schools had special classes for that where the school that I was currently going to didn't so when I went to the Board of Education and took this test um, they asked you questions like um, and they also asked your parents too um, like do you see numbers and letters backwards um, they even put a book to a mirror and see if I could read it faster backwards than frontwards and this has been 32 years ago so my memory may be a little bit shady exactly what the test is and I remember it like some kind of puzzle piece and they, they timed how fast it took you to put the puzzle together and then they had another little flip book that you had to identify stuff with um, but from all these tests they figured out that I had dyslexia and HGA AD is that the right initials um but what that mean is um dyslexia is um kind of weird to explain um you the main symptom that everybody knows is about the backwards letters and numbers but it really affects all communications uh, skills even talking verbally um, that's why I stumble with my words a lot on here uh, I can think of what word I want to say and I hope another total different word comes out that's from my dyslexia um, your brains or the signals in your brain are at a disconnect um, it's like if this was your brain and this is the little area that is giving the signal sometimes the signal does not make it at a different signal that you wasn't even thinking about hits it's weird I know but I've watched uh, many of a video or documentary on this subject just to try to figure out everything that's wrong with me um, but you stumble with your words sometimes words come out that you don't mean to come out um, it's hard for you to form sentences sometimes because you uh, kind of trapped in your own your words are kind of trapped in your own brain because you know what you want to say and you can maybe even say a intelligible sentence in your head but it doesn't come out that way uh, it also affects your memory where 
you can't remember as good as uh, another person it's um, but you also if it didn't learn in like a school setting you d can't figure out things as fast or in the same way as others and that's one of the main things that makes it you struggle at school is you can't be as focused because it just your brain works a different way now when you add in the ADHD that con controls memory as well um, also it makes you very fidgety and you can't focus on one task for long um, your brain's always on overdrive thinking of a million different things with it and you just can't sit still for long um, and I kind of have to force myself to sit here and do these videos if they are longer than like 20 minutes because I start fidgeting and I want to do that and um, it's just I wanted to kind of make you guys aware of what the struggle that I'm kind of actually going through with this um, I can't the reason I'm not very organized like everybody else and even when I try to be organized it's cluttery is that's the way my brain works um, my room right now is very organized for me uh, but for somebody else it's like messy and chaotic but for me that's where my brain is comfortable uh, and all the pictures on the wall and stuff my mom fusses about me having so much on my walls but to me that's that looks good and it's weird um, but I wanted to kind of explain how this affected me as a person in in, in school in school um, I tried to stay very active in like school activities and stuff like that um, and I really 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 um, wanted to be a part of Spanish uh, I wanted to take the Spanish class I wanted to be star of the Spanish club and I had this one teacher in LD which was the learning disability class we were allowed to take classes normally or in LD and there was not a Spanish class in LD um, so you had to take it normally uh, and I use that word loosely I'm just saying that either is an LD class or a class with people that were not LDs what I'm explaining there um, and I really wanted to take Spanish class I've always wanted to know another language um, and I kind of became friends <laughs> with the Spanish cl class teacher um, I'd been her sub not her sub her teacher's aide um, for our elective and I really liked how much fun she made her class and I just wanted to be part of the class and not just this outsider looking in um, so I told my LD teacher that I was going to sign up for Spanish and she told me there's no way with my disabilities there's no way I could do in a, a second language I it was just impossible um, and it was totally offsetting to me because I came from junior high from a different um, whole different um, school into this high school uh, and my LD teacher in junior high her motto was 
you may be uh, you may have a disability uh, a learning disability but you can do anything anyone else can do you just might have to try harder and then I came into this negativity of a teacher um, that didn't have the same belief in me and wasn't trying to install this you can do anything um, belief in me she was actually telling me no you can't do this and I, had, I really want to thank my grade school LD teacher for installing the can do in me at an early age because I actually stood up to this teacher and said I can do this and you're not going to stop me so I signed up for Spanish class even though she said you're going to fail and it's a mistake um, so I signed up for Spanish class and immediately I actually kind of understood Spanish um, writing skill the writing portion of because the like the first uh, semester of Spanish <coughs> and and my school was mostly writing skills and you putting the consonants and the uh, verbs and all that kind of stuff in the right order in forming sentences I could do that perfectly I uh, passed that class with a B uh, most of the semester I even had an A a couple times on the report cards and I just could completely understand the Spanish language and how to form sentences and stuff like that uh, and I kind of was like having a moment like see I showed you uh, I showed you moment with that teacher and from that point on that teacher kind of didn't care for me because um, I wasn't the average little um, whatever you say student I actually stood up to my to her about things I knew I wanted for my life and I wanted to show that someone even with my disorders could do other things and then the next year um, I took Spanish 2 which was the speaking part of it which I could not do I could write it but when it came to getting this my this brain of mine to actually speak the words I could not form the sentences um, but being kind of friends with the Spanish teacher she understood that I had that so she let me kind of take my own time forming the sentences and I didn't have to like do complete sentences as fast as I could as long as I could do like basic sentences like where's my dog or where's the bathroom or my name is she let me buy um, so I still stayed with B C average in there um, and she was so impressed with my um, can do and me actually making the grade even though someone else told me I couldn't that the next year because uh, I, I took it freshman and j junior year so when I got into my sophomore year she let me be her teacher's aide and grade papers because she knew that I could do the reading part really good so I actually got to grade people's papers and stuff like that um, in there um, and and I always um, appreciated that she went up to bat for me with that but on the socializing part of that um, I always felt like an outsider because of my disabilities because I stumble over my words and it's very awkward to try to be friends with someone when you're stumbling over your words all the time so 
if I did become friends with someone, I tried to really be guarded and guard my words. Some people still manage to break through that barrier, barrier, but a lot of people that I would really probably would clicked with and could have been probably good friends with, I just distanced myself from them because I was afraid that they would judge me for my stumbling of words. And I did have bullies. I had people that made fun of me and in grade school that's that started um and and about when i turned about 10 a uh, 10 or 11 um the bullying led me to the eating problem um i when i stress out i run to food that's my go-to stress relief and I've tried so many times not to run to the food for that but it's ingrained and that's what is my comfort um, and I was getting out of it um, a little bit I when I had my husband he became my comfort for a while and I didn't eat as much but he kind of tied into it though because he cooked all the time and he would want me to try stuff to eat stuff and if I'm really truly honest that might be some of the reason I fell in love with him is because he was like this nurturing cooking <laughs> person and and I like that aspect of him. Uh, and I know this is probably just a rambly mess of a story time, but I just wanted to get on here and say, if you do have a disability like dyslexia or ADHD, don't let anyone tell you you cannot do something. Because as long as you try and don't give up, you can do it. Um, they told me I couldn't get my high school diploma. It might have took me three more years after graduating school, but I got it. Um, I have a friend that was also in that class. I don't think he got his diploma, and I don't think he even knew that there was an option that you could go get it. Um, so those teachers wasn't really there for us I don't think um, I think we were just a job and that's sad because if you're a teacher you should care that your student should have this brightest future and you should tell them you can achieve anything as long as you don't give up and I'm really thankful that I did have a teacher that believed in me like that to start off with and I just wish that the high school teachers were the same because no kid should be told they can't do something just because they have a disability um, I just don't really know how um, to portray this in its best light, but I just want—I just kind of was inspired to tell the story of my childhood and me having disability. See, I still have these disabilities to this day, and that's why I struggled with schedule. <laughs> on this channel um i try my hardest to keep a schedule and upload these videos at a certain time sometimes it's the internet truthfully sometimes it's the internet is just so slow that day it just doesn't upload but sometimes it's me because with my disabilities 
it's very easy to be a procrastinator. I made my mind say it. Um, but it's very easy just to put it off because I just cannot focus on things like other people do. It's also why I can't organize or do anything normally. And I use that word lightly. I know there's not really a normal or an unnormal. It's just we default to that word. Um, but I just wanted to kind of share this with everyone. Um, and I don't know for sure if this is the reason I have dyslexia but I read an article that said that sometimes um, you can get it from like if you had like a really high fever like scarlet fever which I had when I was um, three months old no I think I was more like a year old when I was a year old I had scarlet fever and they almost lost me with it um, and after that point my mom noticed that I was s slower to learn things um, I was like rapidly learning things like talking and and shapes and colors and stuff like that and then after the scarlet fever I was different um, so we never know what um, obstacles our life's going to have but there still is no reason to give up um, long as we always say I can and not I can't there's nothing we can't do and with me my personally me personally I know I have a Heavenly Father up in heaven that always has my back um, even when I denied him he cannot deny himself um, so I kind of always kind of felt like someone was looking out for me which after I got saved I knew someone was always looking out for me it was God uh, but I have always kind of been able to achieve whatever I want to achieve it just it might not be in the time frame I give it <laughs> but it always does end up happening for me so hard work does pay off no matter how much the world tries to tell you the good guy always loses or the hard works for not I'm here to tell you that's not true as long as you focus on your go and never give up don't let anything make you give up on a go you can achieve your goals because um, I have and I have a lot of obstacles um, because after grade school and I started the eating uh, I was bullied a lot for my weight and not and being dyslexic and having other disabilities did not help with that bullying um, and feeling the rejection of my peers and grade school middle school junior high on into about freshman junior year, year in high school I was kind of the outsider looking in on all um, the other kids 
didn't really have a friend that I could call my friend. I had people that I talked to, but they wouldn't really friends, if that makes sense. Um, I wouldn't like people I could share secrets with or hang out with or they're all just, I just seen them at school and that was it. Um, and to junior year. Junior year, <clears throat> I met my closest group of friends. To this day, I still talk to most of them. And that where it turned around um, most of them were under me a grade and I had one that was in the same grade as me and that group of friends became um, lifesavers more than they know because by that year my depression had got so bad that I very much might have been one of the statistics that you hear about teenage suicide because I didn't believe anyone cared and I just couldn't take it anymore feeling like the outsider and it was just so bad <laughs> that, that I just didn't want to exist anymore. Um, I've never really said I want to kill myself. I've always just kind of wished I hadn't been born with my because I have this moral compass <laughs> A very strong one that knows murder is wrong and even killing oneself is murder and I've just and I don't know why but I always had this feeling I was gonna die young uh, now I'm 40 so that might have just been a false premonition or something I don't know but I guess 40 is still pretty young so I just don't know I've just always had that feeling that I was going to die young that I wasn't going to make it to an old age I've had it since I was a kid I mean and I used to think I was going to die at 25 that was the number that always kind of came up when I thought about my death uh, which I did a lot which was kind of morbid being a kid but I did I, th I thought about death a lot as a kid um, and I guess it just goes into me being uh, having depression and that just those are things that come up when you are a depressed person um, but all that kind of just plagues on me for many many years and until junior high school or junior in high school and then I find this group amazing group of people that I actually fit into and if any of you are actually watching this and I know at least two of you do watch my channel thank you very much I've never told you any of you this but you saved my life that year this becoming my friend and one of you helped me out more than the others with my stalker that year yes I had a stalker my junior high my junior year of high school and he was a and he was a senior so thank you for for that as well um but I probably have rambled way too long with this but I just wanted to kind of do a story time and kind of show you that it's not no there's no reason to give up on life or a goal because you can do it you just have to have faith that you're gonna pull through and for me I had faith that I can pull through and I knew God was there 
and holding my hand the whole time. And if you do not know that, please listen to me. You also have a Heavenly Father. You just have to claim Him as your Heavenly Father. And if you want to learn more about that, I will leave a link down below that says God's plan. Please click that and go to that website and read. And I will see you in my next video. Um, and if you want um, me to explain that, just leave a, a comment down below and I'll totally tell you what I know about it as well. Um, but I just le felt led to make this video and I just want to encourage all of you to not give up hope and focus on your goals and know you can achieve anything long as you say I can not I can't and I will see you in my next video please be kind to one another enjoy your day don't just endure your day and I love you very very much bye bye